Uh, this is Robert Bull, and we're getting ready to start our to start our ninth webinar. And uh, basically, what we're going to be doing right now is just continuing down the topics we've been doing before. Um, let me get this camera going. Is it on? Yes, I think there it is. Let's have a look. There we are. Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you doing? Here I am with my Venezuelan flag, the bright light behind me, and in my home office, ready to go. Okay, guys? So here's what we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to start off with a whole very interesting topic, a very difficult topic. It's a topic really about retirement. How are you going to be sure you don't run out of money when you're in retirement? And that's always a bit of a problem, okay? And uh, the reason is different reasons. People are living longer and there's all kinds of issues. And right now we just had this huge problem in the market's down, it's up, it's down, it's up. It's like an electrocardiogram. Okay, before we get into this whole thing, let me go my go through my disclaimer. It's very important. So my lawyer said I've got to do this, especially when I'm talking about financial issues. So basically, Robert Bull, I am not a financial advisor, investment advisor, I'm not a security, not a CPA. CPA. You know, I'm just me, okay, period. I, I teach, I have a lot of experience, but I do not have these, uh, these degrees, if you wish. And you agree that you bear full responsibility for your investments, your financial, your tax decisions. You agree that I, Robert, will, will not and am not liable for any investment, financial, tax decisions based on the materials that are being presented today. All information being published was sourced from various publications that I believe to be accurate and reliable. However, there are no claims or representations as to their accuracy, completeness, or truth to any material complaint in this presentation. Please consult your own attorneys or tax advisors, accountants, whatever, okay? Now, we've got some people who are on here that have not been here before. Okay, my name is Robert Full. I'm a University of Miami graduate. I am uh, consider myself an international executive. I work with Procter & Gamble. I worked with Warner Lambert in the Chief Le Adams Division, and I worked in RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company with all these interesting brands, Camel, Winston, Salem, and many others. This is my team that, that work with me, my home team. Here I am with, uh, oh my God, a skeleton, how's that? Well, very basically, I was working in a school, it was basically an acupuncture and oriental medicine school, and they decided, hey, you know what? When these kids graduate as a doctor in oriental medicine, they're really going to set up a business. So I was there helping them with that. Here I am in Argentina signing an agreement to the University of Miami and Argentina. And here I'm in Rotary Club being recognized for the work I was doing. All right. Now, as you go forward, the big question you're going to have is what's going to happen over time to a group of college graduates by the time of the retirement? And I've noticed here that some of my friends that we went to college with, Manuel Sosa, get that money, como está? Okay. Uh, anyway, what's going to happen by the time they graduate? An average group of college, you know, college graduates, excluding, of course, MIT, Harvard, and all the rest. It's average colleges. Okay. Well, guess what's going to happen in retirement? Fifty-four percent of them will not have enough money. They just won't. They'll be living paycheck to paycheck. Sixteen percent won't be around anymore. So basically, it tells you you've got an eighty-four percent probability that you will be around at retirement. Okay. Twenty-five percent will have some money, but are still going to have to continue to work. 1% will be reasonably wealthy, and 4% will have sufficient cash flow to live really well. That's nice to know, okay? Right now, we're going through something called a black swan event. Now, what swan come from? I'm sure you've heard this once in a while lately, black swan, what's a black swan? Well, essentially, all swans in Europe, in the West, are white. So what's a black swan? Well, when explorers ended up in Australia, Surprise, surprise, the swans are black in Australia. So it's something that was totally unexpected, totally unpredictable, never happened before. And in the case of the stock market, we're talking about a negative surprise, okay? Unemployment will probably be right, next month around 15%. And according to Goldman Sachs, we're gonna have a drop in our GDP of about 34%. That is massive, okay? So when we're talking about getting ready for retirement, there's essentially are four vehicles. Your own personal savings, your 401k if the company you work with has a 401k. If you work for yourself, for God's sake, set up your own step virus and things like that. You got your social security and another seminar we'll talk about social security and how to maximize that. And there's Roth IRAs and regular IRAs. Pensions, hmm, 
In the private sector, forget it, there really aren't too many left. In the public sector, be it from the President of the United States, congressmen, representatives, senators, police officers, soldiers, not soldiers, but professional military people go on, all those government officials, yeah, they get retirement benefits, they get a pension plan, we don't, okay, we normal people. So the real question is, and you see sometimes this ads, what's your number? How much income do you want to have when you retire? There's different rules. People say you don't need your full income for retirement. You're not going to have to go to work and come to work. Eh, I don't know. Uh, you know, may, that may be true, but all of a sudden you have a lot more time. And one of the most difficult things when you retire, and I can tell you when I first retired was, guess what? Every day is a weekend. When do you spend your money? On the weekend. You don't spend it Monday through Friday, you're going to work. It's Saturday and Sunday, the weekend. So all of a sudden you have seven days of a weekend, okay? And how long will your nest egg last? Now, inflation, according to the United States government, if you believe it, I don't know, it's 2%. And that excludes food and fuel. Well, now fuel's gone way down, so I guess they want to include it. And we have always an issue, savings versus investment. And some people say it's better to invest as compared to savings for time. Well, let's look at these two things. There's a big difference between making money and having money. There's a guy called Antoine Walker, a basketball player, you may know him. He earned $108 million. Both of these people, right? And then you have another guy called Andy Roderick. He made $20 million. Not too bad, but still, one guy made five times more than the next, all right? Doing what? Both of them playing with balls. One tennis balls, the other one basketball. So what happened to Antoine Bar uh, Roderick? I mean, Antoine Walker, excuse me. He declared bankruptcy in 2010. What happened? He had all these groupies behind him. He had tons of friends. He helped everybody. And guess what? He went bankrupt. Today, he earns his money advising other basketball players what not to do. In other words, don't follow me. Here's what I recommend you do. And Mr. Roderick, what happens to him? Well, today, he's a multi-multi-millionaire. He did a safe, boring investment. He didn't go off in any high-flying thing. Everything's very safe, very boring. And he's a multi-millionaire. So when we talk about retirement, the real question is, what is your objective? Prior to retirement, and let's just look at retirement as this pinnacle, the very top here, that's when you want to retire. At the beginning, it's what we would call a pre-retirement phase, the accumulation phase. This is when you want to build up your assets, you want to build up your things, you're accumulating money. Why? Because when you hit that little top up there, guess what? No more accumulating money. Now it's retirement. Now is when you take that big bag of money and you start spending it on the way down the hill. And hopefully that bag of money will last longer than you do. If not, you're going to end up in Walmart and you see plenty of Walmart greeters. They're always people much older. Why? Well, because they have to work. So supermarkets, whatever. So what is the objective? Well, your money is basically to have a bag of money and make it as big as possible. But how do you make it as big as possible? You see higher rates of return, more risk, better product. So you really have to think, what is the overall strategy, efficient strategy to get to that key and that pinnacle, that top, right before you retire, that you have the most amount. And this is where the whole program starts. So let's have some look at this going forward. You can look at two different areas of your money. You can have tools and equipment or skills and techniques. Okay, so we can go out and buy all the ropes and the shoes and whatever, but we can really add the skills and techniques. Well, we're really talking about product as compared to a uh, strategy. There we are, strategy. So what would you rather have? Would you rather have a whole bunch of the latest products, or would you really have the skills and the techniques and strategy and how to get out there? Well, obviously, it's not just the tools. Everybody has tools. Everybody has products. But what's the strategy to get you out there? So let's have a look right now at what happens to you over your lifetime. And this is just a symbol, okay? Over here we have a pot of what I'm going to call lifetime capital potential. How much money you can make in your whole life. You can earn a bunch of money, or maybe you're lucky you inherit money. I didn't inherit that much, so that's okay. All that goes into a pot throughout your life, and it comes out every month. And then you have a little regulator here. Why do I say regulate? Because whatever you let go through here is your lifestyle. Lifestyle. You go out, you spend it, it's gone forever. Sometimes in Spanish they say, nadie te quita lo bailado. Nobody's going to take away the party you had. But guess what? When the party money is over, there's no more party. There's no more money. 
So you need to regulate your lifestyle here and send money up here. When you send your money up, you're going to have one area, it's going to call the risk area, your investment, stock market. Oh my God, you know. And is it going to keep on going up? Is it gone up 20% the last couple of weeks? Hmm, that's really good. You know, we haven't had such a great boom in a long time. Is that going to continue? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. And then you're going to have safe ones, okay? If you notice, the top of the safe bucket is definitely sealed. The one over here is open. Why is it open? Well, you can have risks, etc. And you're going to have somebody who's going to hit you all the time in your income. It's your taxes, your tax law. All that happens. It just disappears. You pay Uncle Sam, you pay whoever, you pay sales tax. It's gone, okay? So the question that one has to ask, what is the underlying premise of all long-term savings that, you know, that anybody does? Why? Why are we giving up the fun of today, you know, from our income? You know, we're making money. Let's have fun, right? Yeah. In Miami, 59% of the people in Miami are what they call ALICE. ALICE is an acronym that stands for Asset Limited. They have very few assets. Income constraint. They don't earn a lot of money. You get their employees. It's what you could call the working poor. People out there, minimum wage, taking ten dollars, which is not minimum, it's above twelve. It's not too bad, but they live paycheck to paycheck. Miss one paycheck, oh, oh, they're in deep trouble. Okay, so we don't want to be there. That's for sure. So let's go on here. So the question is, what's the answer? Why do we give up our enjoyment today based on income? Essentially, we do it because we want to have free retirement. We want that cash flow coming in. Every month, every week, every year, that money coming in. So what so we can have an income that we want. Remember, we talked about going down the hill. We go up the hill, accumulating money to retirement. Now we retire. We're going to distribute that money on the way down. So it makes sense to understand how retirement income streams work. Today's savings to give us the best income when we retire. So how do they work? Let's have a look at one section. What happened here? Oops. I got to close it out. I'm sorry. It clicked somewhere badly. Okay. So, what I talked about was that pre retirement when you're accumulating, and that post retirement when the money's going out. And it's really one continuous journey. It keeps on going, and it's just a journey, all right? So, there's two rates there's the accumulation rate and a distribution rate. Very different kinds of rates. Oh my gosh, I didn't know. How do I get rid of this? Well, we'll worry about that later. So, on this chart, when we're talking about time is of the essence, why is time of the essence? Here we're talking about somebody who's going to be in retirement. Let's say you start working when you're, pick a date, 25 years old, you're going to retire 65. So, you got 40 years, I suppose, from year one all the way through the year 40, okay? And as you start retiring, you'll see that the growth is very slow when we start making money. But you'll notice here, the slope is much tighter. Why is that slope greater over here? It's called the miracle of compound interest. Somebody much more intelligent than any of us, his name is Albert Einstein, he called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. It was an absolute miracle. And here's what happens. Look at the rate of growth over here. It's a tremendous rate of growth, okay? So that's what we want to be working on. We want that rate of growth to charge through and get us going. So let's see something we're going to call about dollar cost averaging. People say we'll put some money in the time. So what's really important is the sequence of returns. What does it mean? So which is more important to you, earning the most money or having the highest rate of return? Well, let's have a look. Let's just take the period of time in the United States that the average rate was 11.3%. And if you dollar cost average into the flow, we'll tell you what's going to happen. Now remember, that was a period of time and here we're taking a period of time from 1959 all the way to 1994, and the average rate, you see it here at the bottom, okay, there's 11.3%. And this individual put in $1,000 every year, every single year into savings. And what does he have? 
well, 107%. Well, that's okay. That's what you see here. He had up there, uh, the first year was a 1.3% increase, and there were a couple of bad years all the way down here, okay? So let's see when I talk about the sequencing, because nobody knows what's gonna happen in the future. Let's look at this exact same mark, but we're gonna turn around. Here's 1.3 at the bottom, and the bad years are all the way to the top. And what happened? Boom, 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 $172,000. Wait, the same 11.3% return, but one is 107 and the other is 172. So the question I have is, which would you rather have? 107 or 172? And does the rate of return really matter? It doesn't. In both cases, the average rate of return of the S&P is 11.3. But did it make a difference? Yeah. It's the sequence of the return. When did it make a bigger difference for you? Okay. Well, so remember, when we're talking about this, we're talking about on the way going up and then on the way coming down. Okay. So there's something called a Monte Carlo simulation for withdrawing funds. Because when you retire, you have your bucket of money somewhere. You're going to have your 401k, your savings, investments, whatever. And how much can you take out? If you have a million dollars, how much can you take out? If you have a half a million dollars, how much can you take out? Well, there's a Monte Carlo simulation that's been developed over a long period of time. It's a software that uses historical rates of return over 100 years and the probability of running out of money during retirement based on a certain withdrawal rate. Now, nobody knows how long you're going to be in retirement. You know, if you retire at age 65, will you be 15 years of retirement? Will you be 100 years? You reach the age of 100, which would be 65 and 35. You know, so how long are we going to live? We don't know. We do know that we have to be sure we don't run out of money. Because if we run out of money, uh-oh, and we got a big problem, okay? So let's see what the probability of not running out of money. You know, this is probability of not running out of money. And this chart is the period of time, 10 years, 20 years, all the way 30 years. And this is the amount of money of your assets that you have, your 401k, your IRA, your own money. How much can you take out? 3%, 4%, 5%, whatever the case may be. And if you look up here, the thing within 20 years, if you're taking out 3% to 4%, you're not going to run out of money. If you're taking out... Over here, we're looking at a slightly different number. You're taking out uh, the 8% number. Wow. You've got a 22% of not running out of money, which basically means you've got a 78 chance of running out of money. So if you want to be safe, you've got to be all the way up here in the 3 and 4%. Now, even at 3%, after 30 years, potentially you could run out of money and 4% even more. So if you look at the period of time over 20 to 25 years, the odds of running out of money is 3% very low, and we're at 4% a little bit higher, but it kind of tells you that's what you can take out. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. Where do we put our savings? Well, when we take money, we have two basic choices where we're going to save our money. Where we're going to put it in what I'll call liquid assets. Liquid assets are short-term emergencies, opportunities, give a little bit of security. We're talking basically a checking account, a savings account, so many markets. Okay. We have our retirement assets, 401k, IRA, 403b if you're a teacher. You have growth security, stocks, bonds, CDs, annuities, real estate, businesses, all this sort of thing are retirement assets. And over here, oh, something else going to leave blank. But this is our long-term retirement asset. They could be an issue if we're going down the mountain because we need something that's uncorrelated to the stock market. Right now, the market's crashed. Now, will it continue to go up? I don't know. Will it go down? I don't know. We had a black swan. Will the black swan become a black elephant? We don't know. Okay. But if market continues on its volatility, and you're retiring right now, boy, you kind of need something that you don't need to sell your thoughts low, okay? Many of us, if we look at our, our investment, we're going to say, oh, my God, I had 
Exxon Mobil. I was convinced that Exxon's doing well. Well, guess what? It's down over 50%. Hmm, that's not too fun to sell that right now, is it? So, basically, with the Monte Carlo theory, you essentially have to withhold your withdrawal rate to about a three or four percent. So, if you have a million bucks put away, you take that three to four percent, that's thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. Now, remember, you're still going to get Social Security and maybe some other things, but still, thirty thousand dollars a year, how much can you get in Social Security? If you're really lucky, you get 40. You get 40,000 Social Security, another 30,000, 70 grand. Can you live well? You can. Uh, everybody's different lifestyle, okay? My question is, my point is, you're probably going to need between six to ten percent withdrawal rate of that million dollars. You're going to need sixty to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. So where are we going to get that money? Because if we're taking out six to ten percent, we thought there's a great probability we will run out of money. Okay. So what are we going to do? How do you increase your withdrawal rate without being afraid of running out of money? Because the worst thing in retirement is to run out of money and then be dependent on your children when you're older, in the seven, late seventies, early eighties, nineties, and you got to go live in the garage or whatever. You know, that's not too cool. Okay, so we want to avoid that situation. So the problem that we need to address is that retirement funds, your assets, are going to be react very negatively when you take money out because up until the peak of that mountain you're putting money in 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 when you're taking the money out 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 that's a problem but you take some money out in a declining market that is a far the impact is exponentially greater why because not only do you take money out but the market went down it's like a double hit so we have to be most careful with that okay so Let's take an example of somebody's going to retire today, and luckily for them, they have a half a million dollars in assets, and they want to take out 6% a year, be 30 grand, all right? And they also want to have a 3% inflation, because an inflation. And let's just use that average rate of return of 11.3% that we've found that period of time before, okay? Let's just go through that and see what's going to happen. Well, here we see the example, okay? Exact same chart. Okay, with the 1.3 down here at the bottom, where's my first? Where's my first? 1.3 percent, 11.3 total, and up on top, you see it's a little drop of six percent. And this guy's taking out thirty thousand every year, but he's giving himself a three percent increase. And you know we've got some down markets over here, as you see the down markets. And what happens at the end of 26 years of being in retirement? Up. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we see the two down markets over there. I gave him a huge hit on the top, and all of a sudden, 26 years into his retirement, he's essentially broke. So you retired, let's say, age 65. 26 years later, you're 91, and you're broke. You got to go live in your kids' garage. Not exactly something you want to do. Okay, so we just don't know. Now, let's take this exact same scenario. So we're going to turn it around. In other words, the bad years are going to be here compared to up there. Okay. And let's see what happens here. Okay. Well, over here it's got two hundred seven hundred thousand dollars And the other one he had two hundred and forty, if you remember. So it's the, the bad years were the beginning, not at the end. Okay. And there are still the two bad years. And lo and behold, this guy ends up with Wow, two and a half million dollars. You started with the same amount of money, same half a million dollars, took out the same 6%, didn't do anything wrong. But you and I, we cannot control the future. We do not know what those bad markets are going to be. If you're retiring now and you've got the bad market that we had today, and maybe today meaning in this year, and we don't know what's going to happen next year and the following year, you have a couple bad markets. The beginning of retirement, you probably end up with case one. It's practically no money or even worse. But if the bad markets are later in your retirement, but you and I can't control when the bad markets are going to be. We don't know. We don't know when that black swan is going to come with it. So what can we do? Well, here's another option that we could do. 
This is the worst case scenario we just took a while ago with the bad at the beginning, okay? And what we could do potentially, if you notice here, there's a zero there. Why? We're not going to take money out in the bad years. The bad years, that's when we're going to look at our uncorrelated piece of pie, our uncorrelated box. And here we have the exact same bad years, but in the bad years, we run away from our market, our, our savings, our investments, excuse me, our investments, our IRAs, whatever. We don't take any money out because we have uncorrelated assets. And instead of having $22,000, we got $2 million. Now, is this worse than the 2.5? Yes, it is. But this is the worst case scenario in terms of the bad years being up here at the very beginning of retirement as compared to, as in the best case scenario, later on in your retirement. So the question I have to ask is, which portfolio would you want to have? One that you end up with 22 grand or one that you end up with $2 million? So the question really is, where do you get the money to skip the bad years? Where do you get the money to skip those bad years? So I'm looking at this chart again. We're going to put our annual savings is a liquid asset. We'll have our retirement assets, our 401ks, our IRAs, our growth securities, stock bonds, annuities, blah, 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 a long-term asset, but we need something else. And I'm putting a question mark in there because that's our uncorrelated asset. We need to have an asset that is simply not correlated with the stock market, okay? So that's essentially the, 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 the theme of today's market is basically we need to have enough assets uncorrelated so that we can have three, four, five, six years that we're not going to touch our portfolio in a down year, only in the up years, and in the down years, we'll get our non-correlated assets. Now, for those of you who are interested, I will be teaching a course in May called Finance for Non-Financial Managers. It's Miami Dade College course. The, um, school of Continuing Education Professional Development. If you're interested, please contact the lady called Maribel de Paz. Her phone number, she's a coordinator of all those programs, is 305-237-3257. Uh, or you can contact her by email, which is mdepaz, M-D-E-P-A-Z, at miamidaycollege.edu. And I'll be teaching that. It's going to be 18 hours. It'll be six hours a week. Okay, and then once again, my disclaimer, I'm not an investment advisor, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a CPA, I'm not an accountant, financial advisor. You agree that you bear responsibility for your investments. Remember that non-correlated asset, you need that non-correlated asset to offset the bad years, okay? So you're gonna, you're, you agree that you're going to bear the responsibility of your investment, financial decisions, and tax decisions. You agree that Robert fooled me and not liable for any investment, financial, or tax decision that you may have based upon the materials I presented. All the information was sourced from various publications that I believe to be accurate, reliable. However, there are no claims or representations as to the accuracy, completeness, or proof of any materials complaint contained in this presentation. So, I just press the wrong button again. There we go. So I want to thank you, look, too far. I want to thank you for attending this webinar. The next webinar will be on Thursday, this Thursday, two days from today, April 16th. Remember, start time at 4 o'clock. A video of this webinar will go out, I would say tomorrow, but I'll try and get it out tonight because if I have to go and downloading the webinar, et cetera, the video of it. I'm sorry I pressed the button that all that text showed up underneath. I had no idea how I did that, but it happened. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. Uh, my email address is rbull.motory at gmail.com or you can find me on facebook robert full on my facebook page is you know www.facebook.com slash festa financial with a capital f or you can see my youtube channel uh it's under festa but there's tons of festas unfortunately or you can look at the short url dot at slash little b capital d g m t okay so I want to thank you very much for participating in this webinar. I've had a lot of fun. I, well, went faster than I thought. Well, that's good for everybody else. It was basically a half an hour. If you have any questions, let me know right now. We have a little bit of time, and I can see if you have any questions, just put them on. 
and I'll answer the questions. And if you don't have any questions, uh, we'll move on. And I hope to see you guys on Thursday. And let me see if I have any questions here. I don't have any questions at this moment in time. So thank you very much for participating in the webinar. Let me double check the question area. No, no questions. Okay. So listen, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate for everybody participating in this or, or being present in this webinar. And I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. So bye-bye. Take care. And I have to hit the word exit. Where I can't see that. Well, that's terrible. It's a great thing about getting old. There we are. Okay. So sayonara. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I'll see you Thursday, God willing. Please be safe. Stay home. Do what I'm doing. Kind of boring, but you know, at the same time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.